Recently it was discovered that there is a planet that is mostly made up of diamond. Now that's pretty unusual as we believe rocky planets are a lot like the ones we find in our solar system, which are fairly similar to Earth in at least their mineral composition, as far as we can tell. But since this one is mostly made up of diamond, I thought it would be interesting to talk about how diamonds form on Earth. It's very commonly misconceived that coal is pressurized into diamond. That's actually not the case. And there are four different ways diamonds form on Earth, so I just wanted to spend a few moments talking about them. Now, the first and most popular way diamonds are formed, it's thought to be in the upper mantle of the Earth. To create a diamond, you need a lot of heat and pressure, and that's really the only place on Earth that that can really happen. You need about 1,050 degrees Celsius in temperature, and it's... Uh, that upper mantle area is about 150 kilometers below the surface. And as you can see from that red line, it sort of shows you how the diamonds even get up to where we are on the continental plate. And that's when a volcano or other sort of deep source eruption occurs. And the lava that flows up where, upwards from even further below the upper mantle pulls up some of the diamonds with it. Now the reason we hypothesize this is how diamonds get up here is that diamonds are typically found in igneous rock formations and igneous rock is mostly made up of molten from lower beneath the earth's crust. Now the next way in which diamonds are hypothesized to form is when two plates uh, collide with one another and one becomes lodged underneath the other and this picture you can see an oceanic plate colliding with a continental plate and while the oceanic plate is being forced under and the pressure of that uh, interaction is what's creating the diamonds. Now we have found rocks that have been subducted and then returned to the surface that's why we sort of think diamonds can be formed in this way but the diamonds are also really small so it's not the most practical for commercial applications. Now considering the heat and pressure required to form diamonds, this next example is pretty rare, and that's an asteroid that impacts the Earth with enough force to create some diamonds. And there has been evidence of diamonds in asteroid impact sites, but this one is pretty rare and not all that common. Now this last example is probably the most mysterious, or perhaps less mysterious, now that we've found a diamond planet, and that's diamonds that have fallen to the Earth in meteors. And this is different from the last one because it's not the impact that's creating the diamonds, this is rather meteorites, or asteroids rather, that have diamonds already within them. Now it's sort of hypothesized that maybe it's asteroids colliding in space with enough force to create these diamonds, but with the discovery of this new planet, uh, we've seen that, well, there could be large bodies created with diamonds that, well, I'm not really sure how a planet would explode, but, well, it certainly opens up a whole new array of questions on how diamonds are being formed in space, or I should say places other than Earth. Now I wanted to give you guys a little bit more information about this diamond planet. It's located about 40 light years away from the Earth, which is about 380 trillion kilometers, so it's pretty damn far out. And its name is Cancer E. Pardon me, it's 55 Cancer E. And how they figured out it was covered in diamond was that it's mostly made up of carbon, or at least a large percentage percentage of it is carbon. On the Earth, it, we usually have oxygen-rich compounds like silicates, whereas carbon only makes about 0.1% of the composition of the Earth. Now, 55 Cancer E is made up of about 30% or possibly more carbon. And due to the high pressures of planetary interiors, the, this carbon will likely manifest itself in gra graphite and diamond. So it's expected that the surface of this planet is likely covered in graphite and diamond. And being 40 light years away means we're probably not too close to finding it, or I should say visiting it. But nonetheless, it'll really change the way we think of rocky planets in our universe and is still a pretty amazing and cool discovery.